Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the podcast, Love Letters to Pam, or you may be watching via the YouTube channel, Traveling with Jack and Pam. As always, please continue to subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up. If you want to donate, you can do that as well. Also, we do enjoy having reviews left on the podcast providers because that helps kind of move us up the food chain. So if maybe there's other folks out there looking for messages on grief support and related materials, they'll be able to find it just a little bit easier. In the meantime, the title of this particular program, of course, was Widows and Widowers Dare to Dream. Yeah, you may be thinking, well, what are we going to be talking about in terms of dreams? Well, it's kind of a a twofold process here. We're going to kind of unpack things for you. First of all, when you think about dreaming, most of us first think about in the night when we're sleeping, the dreams that we have while we sleep. Sometimes those dreams can be fantastic and we don't want to wake up from the dream. Other times they can be frightening and we can hardly wait to wake up. And then there are times, I don't know if you've ever had this happen, where you wake up with tears on your face because you had such a sad dream. Dreams come in all different shapes, forms, and sizes, so to speak, in the mind. Sometimes people dream in color. Some people never dream in color. Some just dream in black and white. Some can't really remember if there were colors. Dreams are a mystery. And of course, there are tons of books out there. There are videos as well where you can learn more and more about dreams. But dreams also can happen when you're wide awake. It's called daydreaming. How many of you have done that when you're at your job or maybe you're mowing the yard or like me, you're out on a golf course or a hike and you're dreaming about what could have been, what might have been, how your life is going to look. That's daydreaming. You think about plans that you may have and whether or not you should do this, should do that. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. And then sometimes our entire life, especially for those of us who have lost a loved one, it can feel like we're just living in a dream. That we're just kind of passing through. And we continue to tell ourselves, we're going to wake up. We're going to wake up. This is not happening. This hasn't happened. It's all just a dream. But we all know that's not the case. We're not really living a dream, but we do have dreams. And that leads me to the kind of the second half of what I want to talk about. Recently in my day job, I did an interview with an organization called Dream on Three, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. What an amazing organization this was. It was a husband and wife who co-founded the organization. The idea behind it, is to provide sports-themed dreams for kids as young as five up through young adults to the age of 21. These kids and young adults, of course, are facing a a myriad of problems and such. Some, of course, life-threatening diseases, some life-altering accidents, things like that. And they have a love of sports. And this organization, Dream On Three, is able to provide and fulfill these dreams. It's absolutely beautiful what they are doing. An example is, uh, they told me about a young man who loved NASCAR racing. And his dream was, of course, to maybe ride in an actual NASCAR. And he got to do that. Got to ride around a track. Got to see what it's like in the pits. Got to meet the driver. Wow, what a dream that was. Another had something to do with being on the sidelines with a college football team. Another one was something with the New York Yankees. And then they also have day trip activities there in the local Charlotte area where a group of dreamers, as they call them, maybe are taken to a sporting event and taken behind the scenes. And then they have what are called dream boxes. These are going to be for the folks who are maybe hospitalized and maybe in some cases they're isolated away from family and others due to the nature of their illness. And they're able to provide them with a dream box filled with all types of items of their favorite sports team. And they tell me that you just can't believe the the reaction that the kids and young adults have when these dreams are fulfilled, not to mention their families as well. And then, of course, the athletes who are part of this. It's a win-win-win for everyone. That's dream on three. And it got me to thinking about 
how I have had a love of sports since I was a kid. I mean, it goes back to when I was in high school. I actually was able to get press credentials through the Nashville Tennessean. I was able to go to St. Louis and interview my childhood stars of the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team. I saw Lou Brock, Bob Gibson after he retired, but he was there. I got to meet Jack Buck, who was a broadcasting icon for the Cardinals. And I got to talk with him about how I wanted to go into television. Eventually, over time, thanks to having media access, I met some incredible athletes over the years. Some huge names. I mean, I can't even think of them all now. I met Arnold Palmer. I met uh, Pete Rose. Um, I met Johnny Majors. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I also had the opportunity to have met four sitting presidents at various events where they were. It opened up a world to me that was otherwise just a dream. It was a dream I had as a kid that I'd be involved in that type of business and meet all these kinds of people. So my dreams were realized. And then the other dream I had was to meet the woman of my life, the girl of my life. And that, of course, was Pam. Met her in high school, married her in college, and we had a beautiful marriage for 37 years until God called her to heaven. Now, the dream was fulfilled, and then kind of became a little bit of a nightmare when I lost her. Still part of a dream. And I still have those days I feel like I'm going through a dream. But we're allowed to continue to have dreams. And even to this day, I still go to sporting events. And I'm able to get on the sidelines. I'm able to get into the locker room. I'm able to get into the press conferences. And I'm still having dreams fulfilled of meeting people and icons that meant a lot to me in the sports world. I found that just like those kids and young adults are having dreams fulfilled with sports, that sports has almost been a lifeline for me. And I think it's important as widows, widowers, or anyone who's lost a significant person in their life, or a child, or parent, grandparent, that we still have the ability to dream. To dream about what if, what could be. There's still some big sporting events that I still dream about making it to that I'm reaching that stage where it's like, I'm just going to do it. Even if I don't have a media credential because I can't get in for everything, I buy tickets to a lot of things too. And now I don't worry about the price of the tickets as much. Now I realize some folks are not going to have the means to do things like that. And for me, I've probably overspent on some events. But it's all about fulfilling some dreams that I have. You know, you could also have very small, simple dreams. Maybe a dream of yours is to go to this really nice restaurant down the road that you always talked about going to, but you never did. Well, stop talking about it and go. Break the budget for one week. Maybe you dreamed about, oh, gee, I wish I had this particular streaming service so I could see that show. I know it sounds silly, but again, you got to remember, dreams come in all shapes and sizes and forms. So it's okay to continue to dream. I am thankful for sports, and I'm thankful that I had a wife who loved going to sporting events with me. We had season tickets, believe it or not, to five different universities for college football living all around the country. Can't tell you how many college football games we went to, baseball games we went to, basketball games, golf events. In fact, we had her uh, celebration of life service. I kidded. I said, you know, Pam probably went, to me to, went with me for well over 300 football games over the years, and to this day, I'm not sure she ever understood really what a first down was. Of course, I was kidding. I'm sure she did. At least I think she did. The point being, though, she knew that I loved sports, and so she became part of it with me. She went along, I think, more for the experience and the fun. She loved to tailgate. When the kids were little, she just... She'd love going, she would, you know, time to go to the concession stands. I want to stay watching the game. She had no problem. She'd always go up to the concession stand, get a little treat for the kids, things like that. So sports is an important part of my life. Just as those young people seeing those dreams fulfilled at Dream On 3. You may be thinking, what does that name Dream On 3 mean? And I asked the person I was interviewing about it. Well, it's like when teams huddle up sometimes, 
they'll say like uh, say uh, go Chargers on three. Well, they do one, two, three. Dream. They dream on three. You get it? They encourage them to keep dreaming. And some of those young people, I'm sure too, they're dreaming of a cure for the disease or the injury that they have. And someday that dream may be fulfilled. Until that time, though, they'll have those dreams fulfilled through sports and things like that. So I challenge you. Think about some dreams that you might have in your life. Think them through. Think about something you'd really like to do. And I know it's hard to do after you lose your loved one, your, your mate, your friend. I mean, no, I'm not going to say that going to these things that I do now are near as much fun without Pam. But I still do find some joy. And I find when you could focus on something like that, for me being sports, is that for that two, three hour period of time, I'm kind of lost in the sport and cheering for my team or watching my team or watching a particular athlete. And I'm not thinking about my loss. I'm not thinking about my sadness. And I think that's what's happening with those young people. When their dreams are fulfilled, for a time, they're not thinking about the disease they have. They're not thinking about the injury they have or the disability they have. It's an escape. Sports can be an escape. Maybe live theater can be your escape. Maybe making a giant quilt is your escape. The movies can be an escape. And of course I know, the Bible and your, your faith. But that's not really a dream. Your faith is your faith. And I have faith too in a life that's going to be far greater than the life that we've experienced here on earth. So I want to encourage you, also if you're not a believer, to find faith. Find God to believe in. Maybe you believe a different way, but have something you can believe in so that you don't think that this is it. That's what I've often said. If I didn't believe in heaven and Christ, and I thought this was it, wow. For me personally, that would suck. That may work for you, but not for me. So I'm thankful for my faith. But at the same time, I'm thankful for still having dreams. I encourage you to find your dreams. And when you find a dream that maybe works for you within your timeline, your budget, your physical abilities, or whatever, Make it happen. Go out there and get after it, okay? Thanks for watching. Until we see you next time, have a great day. Better yet, a better tomorrow. Bye now.